Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this day, Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all that you've done for me. Blessing and honor and glory.
That you died for us, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You didn't have to do it, but you did, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you for putting flesh on, Lord Jesus, and coming Hallelujah. down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We Lord. just thank you. Yes, we Lord. praise your name, yes. Father. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Have your way in this service, yes, Lord, Lord Jesus. Lord. Have your way, Lord. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you for the man of God and the word yes, that you have Lord. given him for us today, Lord Jesus. We thank you. We praise your name, Lord Jesus. And you get all the glory and the honor and the praise, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Please turn with me with, to Psalms 34. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Psalms 34. When you have it, say amen. amen. I will bless the Lord at all, at times, all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Thank you, Lord. The word be blessed. Hallelujah. I turn you over into the hands of this marvelous choir. Hallelujah. I'll say yes to my Lord. I'll say yes.
Y'all not right. Let me put it like that. Let's start off like that. I'm going to give you a mini sermon and offering and tithes for a second. Y'all not right. Now, I don't have a problem with God bugging me about my sin. Most of all my sin except one. I have a problem with God bugging me to keep telling y'all to give right. Because I don't have it in me to get up here and, and try to motivate y'all to do something you know you're supposed to do. I, I just, I, I, I don't like God bothering me about that. And I know I'm wrong because I don't teach it as strong as I teach other sin. And, and, I, and I know I'm wrong about that. You know, but my thing is, y'all know y'all got to put money in the house. Otherwise, you ain't going to have no food. You know, I don't, I don't, and I guess that's my, that's my crazy mentality or way of thinking. And, and I have to keep reminding you all, you have to give your tithes and offering. And we got over 40 people in this congregation working that bringing home some kind of check. And if everybody paid their tithes and gave their offering, we would never have a financial struggle. Now, I don't bring the struggles to you all because again, I, I, I have a stain. Remember I talk about filtering this up the flesh? I got a stain. Amen. My stain is I don't like people, I don't like begging folks. I, I don't like begging folks. I, I'm the type of person, if I don't have it, I figure it out. Amen? But God is saying, John, the reason I keep taking your money because you won't make them figure it out like you. Now, I'm not giving up no more money like I've been giving up money because I don't have to. Y'all can put the money in. Amen. And, and I was talking to God about, and I told y'all I took out the $25,000 that I was going to use this year to buy me and my wife a house. So I had to lose it, per se. They didn't lose it, you know. 
because I don't come to you all and ride you about paying your tithes and offerings. God said, well, John, if you ain't going to ride them, I'm going to take it from you. Now you decide. He ain't taking no more money from me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Can I, I, I can't make it no plainer than that. So before I let him take money from me again, I let the church fold. Now, do y'all want that to happen? So y'all, the pastor let the church fold. No, I didn't. You let it fold. Because you won't give your tithes and offering like you're supposed to. It's time for y'all to start giving. Now, over 40 people in here, if y'all give like I prescribed it, and I said if you have a full-time job, you give 100, what I said, 150 offering every month and give your tithe. I said if you own Social Security, you give $75 offering a month and your tithe. I said if you have a part-time job, you give what? No, it was 50 for the seniors and 75 for the part-time job for offering. And pay your tithe. Amen. And if I got it mixed up, y'all know what it is because you know you're not giving it. Amen. Because y'all done chose what you're not going to give. Amen. And, it, and, it, and it's not right. It's not right. I, don't, I shouldn't have to preach that hard about giving. He told you if you rob me, if you rob me, if you don't pay your tithe and often I'm going to curse you. I'm going to curse you. The reason y'all struggling and you curse because you won't give like you're supposed to give. Amen. And all you got to do is just give your tithes and your offering. And this church will never hurt. It will never struggle. Amen. Amen. And, and, and you can't say I'm wasting the money. That's, that's impossible for you to say I'm wasting it. If you think I'm wasting the money, man, you got serious issues. Amen. When you look around for uh, for what we for what we have and how good we keep it running, and, and people people come in and think we some big humongous church because of the way we run everything. So y'all can't say I'm wasting the money. You can't look at my clothes and look at what I drive and say I'm wasting no money. You can't. You just can't. Now if you can figure that out, please tell me because I must be getting cheated somewhere down the line. Amen. So y'all got to give your tithes and offer. You know you get paid. Tithes is what you get paid before taxes. Everybody understand it? It's not what you get after taxes. You made $500. The government just took his before you got yours. But you earned $500. So you pay $50 on what you, you pay tithes on what you earn, not what you get. Amen. If I say gross and net, y'all tend to get confused. So whatever you get paid before the government take his portion, that's what you pay tithes on. What you got paid before the government took his portion. That's what you pay tithes on. Amen? Amen. I, I showed y'all in the Bible. Well, I got the right by way of God to tell you what your offering is supposed to be. Amen? That's the minimum of what you give. That's not the max. You can give as much as you want, but you can't go below the minimum. Right. Per person based on your income. Amen. You can afford it. Amen. The problem is you, 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 you can't afford not to give. Because God said, I curse you. Do y'all believe God is a, is, a, is a God of his word? Do y'all believe God do what he said? I curse you. Amen. See, y'all think a curse is always based on not having money. A curse is based on being crazy in your head. A curse is based on you sickly. A curse is based on your husband and your wife ain't treating each other right. A curse is your kids got illnesses. A curse is that you can't think straight. A curse is folks mistreat you on your job. A curse is all of those things and more. See, y'all sitting around waiting for him to take the money, which is a curse also. He said, I will curse you. A curse means that nothing functions right in your life. Now, how many of y'all got all kinds of confusion in your life? Look at your tithe and your offering. That's why you got, I don't have confusion in my life. Amen. None. Because I pay my tithes, I give my offering. Amen. Y'all running around, some of you wives wonder why your husband ain't treating you right because you ain't paying your tithe. Some of you husbands wonder why your wives ain't treating you right and you ain't paying your tithe. Husband and wife, mamas and daddies, you wonder why your kids acting a fool, messing up your house because you're not paying your tithe. I hope I'm making sense. Amen. See, y'all, y'all, y'all got y'all little circle of what y'all think a curse is. Your car ain't never acting right. The mechanic is cheating you. Amen. Amen. You can't find nobody to do your hair. You have any electrical problems in your house? You having uh, issues with, with 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 your body? All of that's a curse. What am I talking? Take listen. Pay your tithe. Amen. You won't have. I ain't got no issues with my house. 
I ain't got no issues with my body. I ain't got no issues with my kids. I ain't got no issues with my wife. I ain't got no issues with no co-worker. I ain't got no issues with my neighbor. I ain't got no issues with no enemy. Why? Because I pay my tithes. Amen. 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 Y'all walk around and say your hair won't grow. Your hair won't act right. That's a curse. Every disadvantage, every struggle in your life is a curse. Listen, you can say, well, pastor, it's a test in the trial. Pay your tithes and you won't look at it as a test in the trial. You'll count it all joy. You can't count it all joy because it's a grace. Amen. You give your tithes and offering, you can count it all joy when you fall into dive for temptation. Therefore, you don't walk around finding nothing wrong with your life. Amen. Pay your tithes. Give your Amen. offering. Watch how God make everything seem so wonderful. Absolutely. Then you can say, I count it all joy. Hallelujah. But y'all don't get it. Y'all, I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know where y'all looking for the curse to be at. You know, anything that ain't making me happy is a curse. So I guess I got one curse. Y'all ain't making me happy, y'all giving. That's a curse for me, because y'all ain't making me happy and you're giving. All you gotta do is give your tithes and your offering. And then I can let the board members come back up and I didn't I didn't want to do the offer. God said, John, you doing it. You doing the offer, and you're gonna tell them. I'm, I'm getting more and more obedient to God on this money thing because I'm tired of him jumping on me about it. Amen. Because I, 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 and I know that's my pride. I, I just don't like asking for, for stuff. I just don't. I just never. I grew out of that. And I, like I said, that's a stain in my life. Amen. I'm going to talk about me a lot today. Amen. But I'm tired of it. And when I get tired of God knocking on my door about a sin, I'm going to resolve it. Because I don't like him coming to me saying, John, you ain't got it, John. You got to do it, John. He done sent all kinds of preachers, saints, members, done told me to fix this. And I just, it's a, it's a struggle. I even let Elder Whitfield teach a whole series in the Bible class to help y'all. God said, John, you should have taught it. Yes, Lord, I'm getting it. Just be, I'm, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Amen. Amen. So let's stand to your feet. Write your text. Get your credit card. Today is a good day to start right. Y'all can't say I beg you for money. Amen. Can't say that, Tommy. No. I don't ask y'all to come wash my car no. without getting paid. No. Amen. Amen. So y'all, y'all, y'all can't put these lies on me. Amen. The Bible tells you to give your pay your tithes and give your offer. <coughs> I didn't come up with that. Somebody holler about, well, I'm on Social Security. I don't care. That's a 10%. God said, I want it. If you don't give it, you're going to be cursed. If you don't give your tithes and offering, God's going to have you imagining stuff that ain't there. Because you won't give your tithes and your offering. The only, let me say this, the only thing God doesn't promise you with tithes and offering is heaven. He don't promise you heaven for that. He promised you I won't curse you down here. Now, if you get cursed down here, you know where you're going. Because you ain't going to do nothing right down here. How can you possibly get to heaven? (laughs) Amen. Y'all stop talking. Stop ignoring me. Stop ignoring me. I'm letting y'all know God said y'all got to do right. Y'all got to do right. Amen. That's all he asking. Just do right. Stop doing your best. Do what's right. For the people in here that got an income coming in. Seriously? Seriously? And, and we can't make bills meet all the time. Y'all want AC? I got an AC. Cause money to run this AC. And, and a heater. Y'all remember them cold days? And hot days? Don't y'all, y'all remember that? I remember. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. I'm going to put you in the hands of our officers, ushers, and our praise choir. Beverly. Sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we offer up to you the sacrifice. Sacrifice. 
spices of joy. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we offer up to you the sacrifice Sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving. So 
wonderful yes, yes, and he's so merciful he looks out for me even though I'm not at all that I should be and what makes him so very special yes, Lord. is that he gave his very life for me what more what more can I say? I am, I am, I am so oh, I'm satisfied. I am oh, I'm satisfied, so satisfied with, my, with my, with my say. He means so much more to me. Sacrifice, sacrifice. We're talking about sacrifice, sacrificing your body. Amen. Let's go to uh, Ro uh, Roman chapter 12. Y'all getting cold? Because I'm getting, I'm perfect, and, and I'm going to be sweating in a minute. And I can't afford to catch a cold. Y'all know we're going down to the, down the road, 3.30 to 4.30. We're having survey 3.30 to 4.30 at the senior complex down the road on Western. Then we're coming back to have night service at 6 o'clock. I don't know who's preaching. Oh, Elder Whitfield, he can handle it. So he's preaching. All right. Um, so we're going down there, we're going to have service. We're praying that some of the tenants come down. Whoever come down, it's only one hour, so y'all going to have to figure out y'all Sunday schedules on eating and all that kind of stuff. I, I know all of y'all ain't going to make it all the time, and I'm not going to make a big deal out of it because it's really for them. But I need ushers, I need praise worship, I need hospitality people, I need, so y'all need to get y'all schedules together and figure this out. I'm not getting in it. Don't ask me no questions. I just need somebody there out of every auxiliary. 
So auxiliary heads, y'all figure it out. Amen? Amen. Now, if y'all want to put people on rotational schedules, I think it should come to all of the services. You know, it'll be good for you, but nevertheless. All right, Roman chapter 12. Roman chapter 12. Amen. We're going to do verse 1 and 2. Everybody feel good? Yeah. That's all right. You'll feel good one day if you don't. Might as well feel good. Verse 1 and 2. Everybody got it? Roman chapter 12. I love being saved. I love it. I wouldn't trade this in. You can't offer me nothing. Amen. The most important thing is life. I already got that, so you can't offer me that. So what you, what you got to offer me to, for me to stop serving God, coming to church, worshiping God? There's, 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 there's nothing you can offer me because I got it. Uh, called life. Life. <laughs> Chapter 12, verse 1. Read. What does it say? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present a living, living sacrifice. Come on, read. Holy. Make sure God is pleased with what you do. Read. Which is your... Verse 2 said what? And be not... But be ye... That good and acceptable. Hallelujah. Perfect. Transform. Y'all done seen that movie Transformer. So y'all have problem understanding what God mean by transform. When that, what was it, Bumblebee? That's the yellow car, right? When Bumblebee turns into that big old robot, does he look like a car? You may see parts of him that he's using in a different perspective. So them wheels no longer look like car wheels. They look like another part of him, doesn't it? But he, he's the same person, ain't it? But he's been transformed. What am I saying? You come over here for God, you got to transform. You still got a mouth. Your mouth don't go nowhere, but you don't use it for the same reason no more. You got money. You always had money, but you don't use it for the same reason no more. You, got, you still got an attitude, but you don't use it for the same reason no more. God said, I ain't taking nothing from you. I want you to take what you got and use it for another reason. Amen. Today, we're going to talk about your heart. God said, I ain't took away none of y'all heart. I didn't, I didn't stop none of y'all from loving. God said, I ain't stopped none of y'all from bowing to something. I haven't stopped any of you all. I, I, when, when, when I, when I transform, uh, transform your heart, I'm not telling you to take your heart and hate folk, dislike folk. I'm telling you to take your heart and love everybody. I didn't even tell you to take your heart and forget about God. I told you to take your heart and give it to the right, the right God. You've been giving it to the wrong God. Keep your heart, but I want you to transform it. I don't want you to love you no more. I want you to love me. So I, I didn't take nothing from you. Amen. I didn't add nothing to you per se. I just gave you my spirit to help you to transform how you see things. I didn't stop folk from hating you. I told you to not hate them. Oh, hallelujah. I didn't tell you to take your money and keep it. I just told you instead of giving your money to the nightclub and the, and the, and the sports arenas and all that, I told you to give it to me. You've always paid tithe. You've always gave away 10% of your money and 150. You've always done that. I just told you, give it to me now. Because you used to give it to 7-Eleven. You used to give it to the liquor store. You used to give it to the wine shop. You gave it away. I'm just telling you, give it to me now. So y'all act like I asked y'all to do something different. I really didn't do nothing but told you to convert what you did and how you did everything. But I want the same, I want the same amount you gave to the devil, just give it to me. I want the same love you gave to you, I want you to give it to me. I want the same, the same commitment you gave to the world, 
I want you to give it to the church. He said, so really, when you really think about it, y'all make a big deal out of stuff. He said, transform. Again, when you look at Bumblebee rolling, he looked like a car. He don't look nothing like a robot. Amen. I'm trying to make get y'all to see something. So when he transformed, he looked like a, a robot. He don't look nothing like an automobile. But it's the same person or thing. What am I saying? Y'all are the same person or thing when you came to Jesus. He said, but people got to see you now and don't see you. The old you. They should see a Joshua chapter 24. The book of Joshua, chapter 24. The name of the message today, it's in the Old Testament. Amen. Uh, uh, the name of the message today is rational worship. Rational. That means you know what you're doing. You should know what you're doing. You need to make up your mind what you're going to do. Let me say it that way. But I still want the title to be called rational worship. I want you to do this because you want to do it. I want you to do this. Or God said, I want y'all to serve me, worship me, obey me because you want it. I want you to make a conscious decision. This is what I want to do. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I mean, one time I was out and I, I was married. I was in, I don't know if I was in Michigan or the Philippines. Philippine. Amen. I was shooting dice. Lost my whole paycheck. Got off work, lost my whole paycheck gambling, writing checks, shooting them bone. Amen. I made a conscience, because every time I lost more, I go, well, I can't pay that bill. Well, I can't pay that bill. Can't, can't pay. I, well, I couldn't pay no bill, but I knew what I was doing. I'm telling I'm going home and I deal with it. I got a wife and bill. I, she going to have to accept this. I'm going home. I'm going to deal with it. Because I, I, I done lost 200. I got to win that back. Now before I know I'd allow 1,200. Oh, that ain't the first time. Y'all act like some, some of y'all done been to Vegas. Y'all done lost more than that. You know, come on. Amen. So I call up my wife and I say, honey, I ain't got no money. I lost my whole paycheck. She said, come on home, baby. We'll figure it out. Rational. I was rational in what I was doing. In other words, I knew exactly what I was doing and I knew the consequences. Amen. But I'm just letting her know before I get home, let's fight a little bit. We can fight some more when I get there. We can fight next week. But uh, the money's gone. And I know exactly who I lost it to. Amen. And I knew every time I wrote a check, I was losing. So I knew that. I knew, hallelujah, should I say, I know in whom I serve. And I know the consequences of whom I serve. And I know the obstacles of whom I serve. I've made a rational decision. I'm going to worship God. And we ain't talking about worship the day, clap your hands. We're talking about and giving him your whole heart. Giving him everything about you. Amen. Letting him to control you. Come on. Uh, uh, Joshua chapter 24, verse 14. We had verse 14. What does it say now? Fear. Fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. What else? And serve him in sincerity and in, come on, and put away the God which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye. Listen, he said, listen, let's stop doing what you used to do. Stop it. Y'all know, y'all know how you live. Y'all know you were stingy, you know you had attitudes, you know you chose who you like and dislike. You were serving another God. You have been trained, you have been formed, you have been taught, you have been directed to do all of them things. He said, listen, we about to go over into Canaan now. We about to go over here and get what God promised us. Let's put this dumb stuff aside. Amen. So y'all got to make a decision. We going to serve God. We going out to win soul. We going out to get people to come to serve Christ. We are about turning the world upside down. We are about giving God my whole body. So stop the dumb stuff. Stop finding excuses of why you can't come and participate and what your church is working toward to win other people. Stop coming up with dumb stuff. 
Because every time you find an excuse of why you can't do what the church has put in forth or already pre-planned, that's you still worshiping yourself. In other words, you ain't turned your back on the world. You ain't turned your back on yourself yet. In other words, you are not giving God rational worship. Hallelujah. Rational worship meaning I know who I serve and I know I'm going to give it to him. And the only way I can give it to him, I got to give it to him from my heart, from my soul, and my mind. My heart meaning I'm going to make you happy. My soul meaning I'm going to make me happy. My mind meaning I got to revamp my lifestyle. Hallelujah. That means everything I'm used to, I got to change it and go another direction. But you have to make that rational decision. That's why it's called rational worship. Because the fact that you die out and deny yourself something, you say, I'm going to worship God now. Come on, read. Verse 15 say what? And if it seem evil. Come on, everybody not reading. Come on, 15 said, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you, if you think is wrong, make a decision. Make a rational decision. If you think it's wrong, then don't do it. But don't fake it. Amen. Don't lie. Don't come up with lame excuses because you ain't deceiving nobody but yourself. Amen. You can't deceive. Listen, there's two people you can't deceive. Three. You, God, and me. You can't deceive us. We just go with the flow. Amen. Me and God go with the flow because we know it's going to jack you up. You ought to be used to being twisted in your mind about doing something you know was wrong and try and justify it. Ain't you tired of what the Bible says? The way of a transgressor is hard. Why you keep trying to do something that you know wrong and trying to make it right? Listen, ain't you tired of that in your brain? Listen, I'm a human. I've been through that junk. That stuff ain't no good. Amen. That wear you down. You wonder why you tired? You wonder why you mentally tired? Because you keep wanting to break God's rule and justify. You can't justify this. You can't justify sin over here. Come on. He said, choose this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of your father, which your father served, that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorite, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me, but as for me and my house, but as for me and my, as for John Porter's and Church of Apostolicity, we're going to serve God. Come on, read 16. He said, what? And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve. You see, y'all walk around and say, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't going to do that. That's wrong. I'm going to get in trouble. You say that, but are you making a rational decision? Are you really ready to commit? That's why he said, I beseech you therefore by the mercies of God. Hallelujah. That you present. That means give me everything you got. God said, I want everything you got. I want your heart, soul, and mind. Give me everything. Beseech you. Paul said, I'm begging you. Give God everything you got. Hallelujah. Rational. Make a decision. Come on, read. What verse 17? He said, what? For the Lord our God, he is it that brought us up. God did what? Put us in our right mind. God, you didn't put yourself in your right mind. You did not give yourself that job you got. You did not give yourself that house you got. Whatever you got, you did not do that. God did that for you. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, whatever well, for the house of bondage and which in those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all ways wherein we went and among all the people through whom we, he said, everything that y'all got, y'all got family members and friends looking at y'all and they know God did something just cause they won't verbally acknowledge it. Trust me, they acknowledge it when they need help. And then no matter how bad they talk about you, when they want prayer, they come to you. So they know that you are not the same person. They know that God didn't change you. They know you better give God some glory for that. Listen, hallelujah. Uh, uh, Joshua was telling him, y'all know good where even the people know. Even the people know. People drive down the street and they say, them folks over there believe in church. They know that God has got a hook in us some way, somehow. Come on, verse 18 said what? Well, and the Lord drave out from before us all the people, even the Amorites would dwell in the land and therefore serve the Lord for he is our God. And Joshua said unto the, listen, and Joshua said unto the people, he said, y'all can't do it. He said, y'all can't do it. Read that again. 
Come on. He said what? And the Lord, I mean, verse, and Joshua said unto the people, ye cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your He said, y'all can't do it. God is a holy God. God don't like what y'all doing. He said, God is a what? God is a holy God. What else? He's a jealous God. God said, uh, y'all don't get it. God said, I don't like it when y'all go out and do sinful stuff. He said, I'm jealous of that. Sounds like a husband, don't he? Or a wife. Somebody that's in love with somebody and then they refuse to do what's right. He said, y'all can't do it. He said, Cause, listen, listen. He said, I brought y'all out of Egypt and y'all still didn't do right. As soon as I brought you out of Egypt, Moses left you for 20 days and you built a calf. He said, y'all can't do it. He said, I brought y'all, I brought y'all through uh, 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 the Red Sea on dry ground, dry ground. And as soon as y'all got hungry, I mean, as soon as y'all got scared again, when y'all saw him coming, y'all, he said, and y'all still walking on dry ground, looking at them coming and saying, God brought us out here to kill us. He said, y'all don't get it. He said, y'all don't believe God. Y'all don't love him. Y'all can't do it. He said, because when I gave y'all manna, the best food in the world, you complain about you want some chicken and you want some dog. He said, I'm giving you manna, the best food you're going to get. Listen, hallelujah. Y'all keep saying y'all want to serve God from your heart and you're finding fault with the word. Hallelujah. Don't y'all know man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. He said, y'all, y'all can't do it. Because y'all have not made a rational decision. Talking about rational worship. See, y'all make, y'all, listen, I was telling them, in what you listen, 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 halfway right is all the way wrong. Halfway right is all the way wrong. God said, I don't want you, I can't have, beseech you, I want everything you got. We got to make a rational decision that we're going to give God rational. Listen, rational worship. Are we going to give God worship based on the fact I know what I am doing and I am willing to sacrifice everything I have because I want to do this for Jesus Christ? Oh, hallelujah. So Joshua said, y'all can't do it. He said, not only that, guess what? God don't forgive sin. That's what he told him, right? Read it. Y'all read it. And he will not forgive your transgression nor your Hmm. So you still want to worship him now? Let me tell you something. That's why I tell y'all, God ain't promised nobody heaven. It's always a might. It's always a might. After you done, you might. After you done the will of the Father, you might. After you done all I required of you, you still ain't no good. So we think Jesus has removed all of our sin. Yes, if God accepts him on your behalf right. or for your sin, if he don't accept him for your sin, because then there's another sentence to say, he said, when, is it? when you sin, he said, there's no more remission of sin if you do it willingly. How many sins have you done willingly? He said, I, I, ain't, gonna, I ain't got to forgive you no more now. Because I told you Jesus died for you. Praise the Lord and hallelujah. But I also threw another clause in there. That if you do it willingly after that, I ain't got to forgive you no more. So you see, I ain't promised none of y'all. Listen, what I'm trying to show you, this is a tightrope situation over here. Listen, but y'all want to give God 50% when he done already told you, if you give me 100, I ain't promising you heaven. So why would you give him 50? At least 100 might get you something. Might. 50 don't get you nothing. That's why half ain't good enough. You got to give him 100 or nothing. Why are you playing around? Make a rational decision to give him rational worship. Decide what you're going to do and stop playing around with him. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What verse was that? 19, read it again. I want this one to be in your spirit. And I'm showing you how, I ain't reading the scripture, but I'm showing you how it applies also in the New Testament. That's why Paul came over there and wrote, said you might receive, because God ain't never, God ain't never promised nobody 100% heaven based on what you do. He even showed you, Moses is my friend. I talked to Moses face to face, and he knew Moses by right was supposed to go to hell. But he threw in mercy. Then God come along and said, I give mercy to whom I want to give mercy. Y'all don't tell me who to give mercy to. He said, but I, I tell you this much. It's based on your works. It's based on your fruit. And let me tell you this much. Why you think you can give or build or do it. He said, and I determine how much fruit you ought to give. 
So you ain't never got heaven promise. But you better work at it. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody say, well, if I ain't got a promise, why do I do this? Go to hell then. Go. You can go. You can go. Ain't nobody stop. You can stop serving God any day you choose. That's why he's telling them, choose this day. Make a decision. Because if you don't do it 100%, you're going to hell anyway. If I'm going to go to hell. I'm going in style, boy. I tell you. Ain't going to be no faking and shaking on my side. Come on, hallelujah. Verse 20, he said what? If you forsake, listen, if you forsake the Lord and serve strange God, then he will turn and do you, oh, hurt. He said, I'm going to hurt you. And then not only will I hurt you, I'm going to consume you. What else am I going to do? And after he have done, I, I said, after all I've done for you, you think you can walk back? You think you can go after all the good? That I've done for you all. Come on, read. 21, he said, and the people said unto Joshua, Nay. No, no, we can do it. We can we can do it. We can do it. See, some of y'all are saying that. Oh, Pastor, we can do it. You sure? You sure? If you really think in your heart and mind, you ain't got no more Sundays. No Sundays belong to Church of Apostolicity now. If you really look at it in reality, I get through preaching, what, an hour from now? You got time to go eat or rest, whichever you choose. You got to be in another church. Listen, service starts at 3.30. That means we can't walk in the door at 3.30, huh? That means we got to get there at 3, minimum. And that's pushing it. But to get there at 3, I got to be through eating at 2.30. I just gave you an hour to eat, minimum. See, that's why some of y'all going to be walking in late. Because y'all don't realize, y'all don't realize, your Sundays are taken if you're going to serve God. It's over. It's over. You're going to grab food in route. You're going to inhale food or not eat. You're going to go without eating and fast all the way on Sunday. But that's your decision. I'm not telling you how to make it work. But guess what? We're having service three Sundays a week. Hallelujah. We're going to go down there and we're going to have a service. And I'm going to be at every one of them. And guess what? I already know I can't eat. Because if I got to preach, I can't eat. I can't preach until like two hours after eating. So I already know I can't eat until after that service. But I know after that service, I'm going to be so hyped up, I ain't going to want nothing to eat. So I probably won't get to eat until I get home at night. I'm okay with that. Why? Because I'm a slave to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm not asking y'all to do what I do because my job is more bigger than yours. I'm asking you, you better make sure what you agreeing to. So you holler about nay, nay, Lord. Nay, John. Nay, Pastor. We can do it. But we will. So you saying you're going to serve God? Well, your life just changed on Sundays that's it now you got to figure it out what you gonna do you ain't preaching so you can eat I can't do it I throw up come on read 22 he said what and Joshua said unto the people I love that verse right there you are witnesses against nope not yet you are witnesses against. Come on, everybody, say that with me. I am a witness against my. Hmm. Now, you're only a witness against yourself if you saying you can do it. If you saying God is going to be my God, you're a witness against yourself. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. You a witness, I'm a witness, Jesus a witness, you don't do it, you, op- you, you just made a, 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 a grave in hell. Isn't that what the Bible said? God said, I'm going to base my decision on two or three witnesses. One is you. Two is your pastor, because I got to give an account. Three. You see what kind of position you're putting yourselves in? So you got to make a decision. God, you got me or you don't have me. Now, some of y'all are going to probably run and run to another church. That's fine. That's your call. Remember, we say make a decision. We really would prefer you to do the right thing, but we ain't going to stop nobody from doing the wrong thing because even though you hear it, they did it too. They did not make a decision to serve God. That's why the Gentiles get an opportunity to be saved. That's another sermon. But I'm just letting you know, y'all, we are trying to, listen, we all agree that we're going to turn this world upside down. 
That requires God getting all of us, not a part of us. Come on, read. Remember, what's the name of the, 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 the title? Rational Worship. Are you really ready to make a conscious decision and say, I'm going to serve God? Come on, what, what verse was that? 21, 22? Read it from the top. And Joshua said unto the people, ye are witnesses against yourself that you have chosen you. Y'all are witnesses against yourself that you chose Jesus. If you're chosen. If you're chosen. Now, if you don't choose it, just say, Jesus, all you got is 40%. I'll work on the 60. He said, I'm fair with that. Because at least you're honest. Now, but if you happen to die before I get that other 60, you know where you're going, right? So they make sure I ain't promised you to live till I get that 60. I ain't promising you will live until I get that other percent, whatever it is. God said, I ain't promise you that now, because I ain't even promised you heaven, even if I get the hundred percent. So let's get some straight. I ain't promising you hallelujah. I'm not promising you heaven if I only get that percent. Now, if you decide you don't want to give me a hundred, you want to run somewhere else, he said, you know, you still ain't giving me what I asked for, because the scriptures are still valid. Just because you ran doesn't make the scriptures void. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, 22 from the top. And Joshua said unto the people, ye are witnesses against yourself that ye have chosen you, the Lord, to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. Some of y'all, some of y'all chose to serve God and, and, and be part of the different auxiliary and y'all can't get here and do your job on time. And then when you don't get here, you want me to give you some mercy all the time. Why should I? I ain't giving you no mercy all the time. Why should I, why should I keep giving you mercy because you won't do right? I really like to know why should I? Why should I give you mercy when you refuse to do right? Please help me to understand that. Why can't you give me some mercy? And say, I'm going to get there on time and do what I'm doing. Why can't you give me mercy? I ain't talking about me, I'm talking about Jesus. Jesus said, why can't you give me some mercy? Why don't you get here on time and do your job like you agreed to? You the one signed that form. Do y'all, do everybody want me to give you a copy of the auxiliary form that you signed and say what you was going to do? Conscious, conscious, huh? talking about rational worship. It's time for you to make a conscious decision. I'm going to serve God and I'm going to do it right. Come on, read. Where are we? Joshua chapter 24, verse 23. Come on, read. What does it say? Now, therefore, now, therefore, do what? Put away, he said, said he, them strange, strange God. Which are, listen, it's time for y'all to stop worshiping your mama, your daddy, yourself, your sister, your uncle, your granny. It's time for you to stop worshiping your job, your car, your clothes. It's time for you to put away that strange stuff. It's time for where you to put away your stomach. Well, I got to eat. Hallelujah. Listen, you done ate on the run before. You done nick, knack, and snack before and survived. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You done drank all that alcohol and put it in your belly and ate some hot wings and you didn't die. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You done went from club to club and didn't eat until it was four in the morning. You done drank all night and all of a sudden you can't do it no more. Come on, God said, I know better than that. John Point is no better than that. What am I trying to say? Listen, y'all better put away them strange God. You better put away them excuses. That's what I'm saying. Put them away. Got all these excuses of why. Well, I, you know, I got to eat. If I don't eat, I'm going to get a headache. Come on, I'm a human. I've been through them excuses. God said, y'all better put that stuff away because you ain't going to get to do what you used to do on Sundays no more. That's coming to a close. God said, Sundays are mine anyway. I've been giving y'all some leeway. He said, now nah, I want some more of it since you promised it to me because you are a witness against yourself. Come on, read. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. From the top, 23. Read it again. Now, therefore... Put away, said he, them strange gods which are among you and incline your heart unto the Lord. Put them away and incline. In other words, wake up every morning saying, Lord, what you want me to do? Notice he said, incline your what? And not your ear, incline your heart. I want your heart. 
I want you to love me with no other. Listen, he said, love the Lord with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, with all thy spirit. That means God said, I want every piece and inch of piece of you. I want to control you. If I can't control you. Who in here married and don't want to control their spouse? You want your spouse to do what you say. Men and women. You don't need y'all faking it, you know. You don't want to tell Aaron he can't go somewhere and he just ignore you. We don't, God say, so y'all think I died for y'all and saved y'all and I don't want to control? I want to, because if I don't control you, you're going back in the world. Because you like that stuff anyway. I'm trying, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> All y'all that went out and got married. Mm-hmm, that's right, it's coming. All y'all that went out and got married. Don't say nothing because I don't want your spouse to hit you. <laughs> but can you honestly say that you didn't think about that other man or that other woman after you married him? Can you honestly say there was moments you didn't say, I wish? Can you, come on, I don't need your lying to yourself. Because we make each other mad. And that, listen, listen, we, we, that, it's a passing thought. We don't dwell on it, but it is a passing thought. Oh, see, you see, y'all can't even be honest. Listen, hallelujah. I, I'm telling you, I've done it and I'm mad. But I ain't left my wife, but I don't dwell on the thought. Listen, what am I trying to say? You being saved doesn't mean past thought ain't going to come to your mind, but you got to throw them in the trash. And no, I can't do that no more because I belong to another. I want to listen to my mama, but you're making me disobey God. So mama can't listen to you. My brother, I want to come to your party, but it's going to interfere with me at my church. I can't do it. So it ain't that the thought don't come. Paul put it like this. When I would do good, let me throw a monkey wrench in there. Paul said that because he was working hard on living saved. Follow me. He said that. Because he was working toward salvation. So he said, when I want to do good. Now, that's also applicable to all of you scoundrels that say, when you want to do evil, good is always. Okay, let me help you out. Every time you want to go do something you ain't got no business, what tells you not to do it? Every time you want to do something, you ain't got no business. You want to do this. But something is saying, oh, you know, you can't do that. So every, oh, hallelujah. Every time evil, every time you want to do something evil, good is always present. That's what makes it a fight. You have to decide which one is going to win the fight. But listen, when you want to do good, evil is present. When you want to do evil, good is present. Which one are you going to give in to? What am I saying? Hallelujah. I put it like this. Just because I got saved, women didn't, all women didn't stop wearing short dresses. I had to stop looking at them. So you're going to blame that on the devil? No, she want to wear a short dress. She ain't saved. Why can't she wear one? She's doing what she like. But I can't do what I'm used to doing, which is gawking at her. But I want to do evil. But good say, turn your head, John. But I want to do good, and then she get out the car and gap her leg. Evil is always present. So what am I supposed to do? <laughs> See, ladies, y'all don't know nothing about that. We got women get out the car on purpose and do this. <laughs> and, and, amen, brothers. <laughs> I'm not trying to make y'all laugh. I'm dealing with reality. Amen. So therefore, when we see the woman, don't even look her way. Then we don't get caught up in all of them tricks. See, let me tell you something. That's why so many of y'all trip and fall because y'all don't deal with reality. I deal with reality. Listen, just because I got saved, listen, the devil ain't stopped throwing monkey wrenches in my life trying to get me to trip up. Hallelujah. Y'all can sit around and act like it ain't happening all you want. And then when you get caught, well, Pastor, you remember that time? You was right. I'm always right. You just don't want to accept it. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. I love it. I love it. He said, incline your heart. Listen, make up your mind. I'm going to serve God. I ain't serving nobody else. Let's read. Go to, go to St. John. St. John chapter 3. 
No, I want to go two more verses. Come on, verse 24. I'm sorry. Go back to Joshua 24 and go to verse 24. And the people said unto Joshua, The Lord our God we will we serve and his voice. His voice I will obey. Remember, y'all are witness against yourself. Amen. So the man is saying, the people are saying, rather, and the people said unto Joshua, the Lord our God will we serve, and his voice will we obey. Verse 25, so it what? So Joshua. So Joshua did what? He made a what? A covenant is not a contract. A contract is something you make that has, has an expiration date. Covenant, there's no expiration date. Well, if you call death, but see, it goes all the way into death. Listen, covenant is something. So Joshua made a covenant with them, not a contract. So that means the day, today, if today, if today you make a decision to say, I'm going to serve the Lord and I'm going to give him my heart. I'm going to make a conscious, rational decision of worship. You're making a covenant with God. You say, Lord, you got me. You got me, Lord. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Now, let's get something straight. Because I know some of y'all think, well, I ain't going to do it. That's okay, too. Remember, there's consequences to every decision you make. Now, since I got to make a decision today, I'm going to make a decision on, listen, that's for my good. And in the midst of making the decision, I'm going to pray and say, Lord, if and when I mess up, please forgive me and correct me. But I ain't going to say, Lord, I ain't doing it. That's too risky. I'd rather err on the side of caution. If I'm going to mess up, let me mess up on with some caution. Let me mess up under some mercy. Let me mess up under some grace. I ain't going to just blatantly tell God, no, I ain't going to do that. I can't do that. I can't, I can't do that. Come on, read. What else he said? So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and set them a salute, a statue and an ordinance in Shechem. In other words, he made a physical representation of their commitment. Physical representation. So y'all don't ever forget. Y'all don't ever forget. Hallelujah. I got a physical representation for y'all. It's forthcoming. So y'all won't ever forget that you made a decision. God, you got me on Sunday. Now, I've been telling y'all this since you became a member of the church, since you heard my voice. I've always told you this. I've always told you, don't make plans on Sundays, haven't I? I've always told y'all that. But see, y'all expect me to give everything to you. Listen, Joshua, God did not tell Joshua to make them to make that commitment until, look, they didn't come out of Egypt. They got Moses, but nobody said, let's make a commitment until the blessing was about to flow. Let me tell you this. God said, I'm about to pour out blessings upon y'all, but I need commitment because if you ain't committing, I know I need to know who to bless. I need to know who to pour out blessings. Don't y'all walk out here and think you'll get a whole lot of money. Don't think of it like that. Think of it like this. That if you say you're going to serve God, God said, I'm going to make sure everything you do, everything you can't do, everything you don't have time to do, I'm going to take care of it for you. In other words, I'm going to make your life a little bit easier because you've committed to give me all of you. Listen, I don't want all of you if I can't use you, if you can't help me. I don't need you if you're struggling paying bills. I don't need you if you can kicked out of your houses. Listen, you can't help me if you're always broken ain't got nothing. You can't help me if you're sick and your kids and husband and wife running them up. I need somebody that life is in great shape so when I call you, you ain't worried about what you're leaving behind. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Come on. Come on, St. John now, chapter 3. Don't, don't, don't get confused about the blessing. Gosh, I'm going to make your life easy. I'm going to make your life easier for you. Your children going to do better in school because you ain't got time to sit with them now all the time and make them do their homework. I tweak their brain so they can go to school and do right and, be, and have a 4.0 average because I need you. Oh, I need you praying. I can't say I need you praying and your kids need home, helping homework. I got I to gotta rig everything. Oh, what am I saying? God said, when y'all decide to bow to me, I rig the rest of your life to make it easy for you. Listen, that's a blessing. But if I can't get all of you, I can't fix your life. Listen, we got to cheat over here. All we got to do is obey God. We got to cheat. We got to cheat, but I can't, I ain't going to make your life good so you can keep serving the devil. 
I ain't going to make your life easy so you can keep running the street. I'm going to make your life easy so you can serve me when I call you. Since you're going to obey me, I want you to hear me when I call you. I want you to come to my rescue when I call you. But if I make your life topsy-turvy, you can't do it. Listen, God ain't crazy. God no good and well. I don't care how saved we are. I don't care how saved we are. When we can't pay bills, it messes us up. Am, am I, am I got any witnesses? I don't care how much Holy Ghost you got. Because you know I got to pay that bill. But God said, I can keep your bills paid and you don't have to worry about that no more. So now since your mind is relaxed now, can I have it? Can I have your mind? Since you ain't worried about that. Since you ain't worried about your kids failing in school, can I have that time? Since you ain't worried about your car breaking down, can I have that time? In other words, I, I want all of them time that you was worried and nervous, can I have that time? Because I don't fix all of that. Have you, ever, have you ever had a serious problem and it, it, it was consuming you? I mean, if I ever been consumed by one serious, you just consumed. Like, I got to do this, I got to do this. And everything that's making you function is, is about that problem. And then wake up one day and that problem is gone, then you go. You ain't got nothing to do because you've been consumed by a problem that doesn't exist no more. Oh, hallelujah. You've been consumed by a problem that doesn't exist no more. God said, let me tell you something. I'm going to bless y'all. All of them problems that got y'all consumed, I'm going to solve them. Now, can I have that time that you were using over there? Can I, listen, can I have that time you gave the devil? Can I have that time you gave yourself? Can I have that time you gave your mama? Can I have that time? Because you gave it to them because they were your God. But now I'm your God. Can I have that time because you don't have to worry about it no more. Can I have it? You've been giving it away forever. So why is it a problem that I wanted? Well, you know, I got to go to church. You know, all we got to, you weren't saying that when that problem was consuming you, you were trying to figure out how to solve it. So I made your life easy. Come on. St. John chapter 3. Oh, hallelujah. God wants to help us rational. Rational worship. You got to make a conscious decision. I'm serving God. I'm serving God. Y'all can't even y'all can't even come to prayer on Monday. You got an excuse. Hallelujah. Because you keep you keep working towards your own self, trying to do stuff for yourself. And God said, Why don't you give me Mondays? And I make Tuesdays great. And if I know I can have you on Mondays, I make your Mondays great. But since you ain't giving me Monday night, so why should I give you day Mondays? I ain't giving you Monday daylight. You ain't giving me Monday night. And I don't know what all I want is an hour. Man, I had a bad day. You know how Mondays are. Mondays just like Tuesday. Tuesday like Wednesday. Wednesday like Thursday. Thursday like Friday. Fridays are like Saturday. Saturdays are like Sunday. Sundays are like Mondays to me. That's how I see days. I don't look at days, I look at hours. That's why I can't keep up with days. Because I know, man, got no more hours. Monday, 12 o'clock, like, man, okay, I got to do this. I'm looking at tomorrow. That's why sometimes you ask me what the day, I got to go, what is today? I ask my wife, sometimes I wake up and go, baby, what's today? She said, you don't know. I said, if I knew, I wouldn't ask you. No, what's today? All I know is what I got to do today. Now, what day is it? So I know if I run out of here and stuff closed and I can't do it. That's why I love holidays. Holidays, folk leave me alone on holidays because y'all having fun. And I'm glad you're having fun. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. John chapter 3, verse 16. Read, say what? For God. <laughs> For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. God gave up the. Ooh glory. Hallelujah. God gave up the only valuable thing he ever owned. God gave up the only valuable thing he's ever owned. He gave it up for me and you. So he's asking for that in return. Give me the only thing that's valuable to you. Which is you. That's why he said, I beseech thee therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present 
your body. Give me your body. I gave you my body in the form of Jesus Christ. I gave you my body. I called him my son because I'm a spirit, but I made a body. It's me in it, but I called him my son. I gave you the most valuable thing I own, which is, was me. Can I get that from you? But guess what? I'm not asking you to die like I did. I'm asking you to live like I wanted to live. Oh, y'all missed that. I'm asking you to live like I wanted to live. I'm not asking you to die like I died. I'm asking you to live like I wanted to live. How did you want to live, Jesus? I wanted to walk around and win other people to me. I can't do that. So I need y'all to walk around and win other people to me. Can y'all do that? That's all I'm asking you to do. I take care of your money. I take care of your family. I take care of all that stuff. You ain't got to worry about none of that stuff. I take care of your health. I take care of your children. I take care of their education. I take care of you getting a job. I take care of folks liking you. He said, all you do good, I'll make your enemies get along with you. But all I want you to do is walk around and love folks. And I do the, oh, hallelujah. Walk around and love folks and I do the rest. I think that's a, I think that's a fair trade-off. I think that's a very good deal. I don't know about y'all. All I got to do, all I got to do is walk around. All I got to do is walk around and be nice to folks by the help of the Holy Ghost. I think that's a pretty good deal. Amen. Y'all don't think so? Come on, read. No, I want you to go to 1 Timothy chapter 2 now. Keep going forward. New Testament. 1 Timothy chapter chapter 2. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What am I saying, y'all? What am I saying? What's the message? Rational worship. Rational worship. Man, either my eyes have got bad up here or my glasses have got bad. Can't see y'all no more. Come on. Let's read. You got it? Uh, 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 First Timothy chapter 2. Verse 1. Everybody got it? Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Verse 1. Read what it says. I exhort, I extol, ex, exhort therefore that first of all supplication, prayer, intercession, and giving of thanks. Read that again. Let's get something straight. We don't have the right to talk about nobody. He said, pray for everybody. That's why I have a problem with y'all talking about my president. Because I, I happen to love him. Do I love everything he do? No, I don't love everything nobody do. Not even me. But I love him. I'm supposed to pray for him, not talk about him. You got preachers. Preachers. Think it's okay to get up and put him down. You can't do that. We're saints. We're not Christians. We can't do that. You pray for him. If you think he's doing something wrong, pray for him. Come, I'm going to show you another scripture because God just might save him. And then when God saves him, what are all you idiots going to say then? How bad he was? Look how bad I was. Look how bad you were. Look how bad you were. Listen, suppose everybody talked about us about how bad we were. And they do talk about us. <laughs> but look how good we are now. All he needs is Jesus, just like everybody else. So he said, he said, let me get y'all straight. First of all, I need y'all praying for every sinner out there. Stop just limiting it to the sinners that you love, that don't love you. Because no sinners love saints. I don't care who they are. They love you as long as you're on their side. Talk about Jesus and see what happens. Talk about getting baptized in Jesus' name and see what happens. Talk about speaking in tongues with the Holy Ghost and see what happens. You'll find out they don't love you that much. Hallelujah. But yet you pray for them. Why don't you pray for everybody else? Pray for the prostitute. Pray for the dope dealer. Pray for the gang man. Pray for the bombs on the street. Pray for everybody. Listen, we're going out to win folks that don't want them, that don't know God. But y'all won't give up your life. How you think you're going to reach them? Witness when you get around to it. Well, we know how that works, don't we? 
Come on. Next, hallelujah. Verse 2 said what? For king, king, see, the, 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 he couldn't say presidents because there was no presidents at the time. Kings are what? Rulers. Rulers in what? Kings control the country. The presidents control the country. Don't say nothing negative. We see negative. I see negative in you. So I'm going to get on TV and, 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 and blast you too. We see negative in everybody. But he needs prayer. That's why y'all need to understand. Stop. Listen, y'all stop categorizing sin. Sin is disobedience to God. Come on, read from the top. For king, for all of those that are in. For all of those that are in. I sure like to know who was he referring to back in those days. I sure like to know. He, mean, tell me, he wasn't talking about senators, representatives, mayors, polices. Your mama and your daddy. They in authority, ain't they? But we just going to live it to the one we love. He said, if you love them that love you, sinners do that. We ain't sinners, y'all. We are saints. We going to go beyond the norm. What is the norm? Hallelujah. Getting our mind out of the world and putting our mind on Jesus Christ. Listen, we got to hit these streets. We are going to people that can't come to us. And you ain't got time for it? How would y'all like it if I didn't have time for y'all when y'all came to me? If I turn y'all down, y'all be saying, that ain't no good pastor. He ain't never got time for us. Well, you ain't got time for sinners. You're going to reap what you sow. Come on. Read. What else he said? Verse 2 from the top. 4. And for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness. Listen. Oh, oh, oh God, you're wonderful. God said, when y'all do right, your life is easy. Ain't that what he just said? Quiet, peaceable life. When you do right, your life is easy. But if you don't do right, you're going to have a, come on. Verse 2, he said what? 3, he said what? But this is good and acceptable in the sight of God. Come on, verse 4 said what? Who will have all men to be? Who will have all men to be? And to come unto the knowledge. God, listen y'all. God want everybody saved. Now we know everybody ain't going to get saved. Just like all of y'all sitting up in here ain't going to make it to heaven. Y'all ain't going to make it. You know why? Because God knows some of y'all just ain't going to do right. I'm not one of that. I'm not in that group. I told y'all. I don't know if I ever showed y'all. I know I, I, I said I was going to. God said one out of every three getting saved. One out of every three. If y'all two be in my three, y'all going to hell. <laughs> y'all don't want to be in. Y'all don't want to be with me when it comes to one out of three. You, you can say that too. Say it. Say what I just said. You got to go in hell if you got to right. If you really sure about that, then live the life. If you sure about it, live the life. Don't worry. If all three of us sure about it, he'll put you in another group. He'll put you in another group. Y'all don't want to be in my group. Y'all better hope y'all get in another group. Listen, all you got to do is obey him and do what's right. Oh, y'all don't get it. See, y'all too busy. Listen, all you got to do is do it, do what's right. He'll put you in another group. He put me in a group where I know I'm going to win. He said, oh, John, you got two more going to win. I got to separate y'all because otherwise ain't neither one of y'all going to make it. Ask God to put you in another group. Ask God put you in the group of church of apostolicity living right. Oh, glory. Ask God to put you in the holy group. Ask, oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. What verse was that? Did we read four? Come on. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 3. Keep going forward. Almost at the end of the book. The Bible, rather. 2 Peter chapter 3. You got 1 Peter. Then you're going to go and get to 2 Peter. Chapter 3. Hallelujah. Listen, God don't want nobody to go to hell. He don't want nobody to go to hell. That's why he get preachers. That's why he got me. That's why he got me talking to us today. God said, I don't want none of y'all to go to hell. But if y'all ain't going to give me 100%, somebody coming up short. 
Why don't you give him 100%? You don't get to choose. You don't get to choose. You don't get to choose over here. You understand? You don't get to choose. Can I say it again? You don't get to choose. Well, I take that back. You get to choose whether you're going to give 100% or not. That's the only choice you got. Everything, yeah? Because if you don't give him 100%, he leave you alone. And if you give him 100%, oh boy, he got you. He started remaking you then. He started changing everything. Amen. But if you give him 50%, he don't bother you. He got 50% just the fact that you woke up this morning and said, thank you, Lord. God said, okay, that's all you promised me. So I really don't expect nothing else out of you the rest of the day. See why he won't bother you. You see why sometimes y'all don't get convicted of your sin? Because you got up and you gave him the percentage that you promised him. You woke up or you got blessed. Or you, no, here's a good one. When you got ready to eat that breakfast and you said, Lord, bless and sanctify this food. And take out the purity. God said, okay, I got my 50%. I'm gone. Now, you wonder why the rest of your day is all jacked up? Because I left you. You, all, you, gave me, you gave me what I asked for. Or you promised me, brother. You gave me what you promised me. So I don't owe you nothing else. I don't owe you nothing. I don't know why the devil keep bothering me. Because I ain't there to protect you. I didn't promise. You told me I can only have 50%. I got that when you blessed the food this morning. I got that when you woke up and said, thank you, Lord, for waking me. I got my 50%. I just want some praise. I just want some worship. Listen, you gave me from your mouth. I don't expect nothing from your heart. Let me break it down some more. When you don't give God 100%, all you saying is you're going to give him some mouth exercises. Right. But when you give him 100%, that means he got your heart. Right. I don't want no wife. All I get is a mouth. I want a heart. Right. I get your heart. I got your mouth. Right. I get your mouth. I might not ever get your heart. Right. What am I saying? God said, y'all don't want to give me all. Y'all want to give me pieces of you. God said, I take the pieces. Because I like being praised. I take the pieces. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Are you, everybody got it? 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. Read. What does it say? But be loved. He, now, I'm, let me tell you what's going on. He's telling them what's, what's going to happen in the end time. And he's trying to make us aware. But we should have a different mentality. Come on. Verse 8, he said what? But be loved. Be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. And a thousand years... Nobody never lived a thousand years. Methuselah guy, I believe, was 960. So everybody died in the day they born. God don't look at days the way we look at days. God look at days. It takes a thousand years to make a day for the Lord. See what I'm saying? So God said, y'all need to understand, I'm long-suffering. I let y'all live a long time. Now, when you really equate it to down to 70 years, you ain't talking about but many. That's why Peter also said on one occasion, our life is as a vapor, a period, but for a moment. Did you, ever, you ever smell something? And the moment you smelled it, you tried to pinpoint it, it was gone. That's how fast we live and die. Just that fast. Like, I saw it. It's gone. Our life ain't nothing but a vapor, that a period, but a moment, and then vanishes so when next time you smell something and try to pinpoint what it was, where it came from, that's how fast we live in the sight of God. So we need to understand, you don't have a lot of time to impress him. You don't have a lot of time. And he said, the way you impress me, the way I'm 60. Narrow that down into thousands of years. That's a matter of seconds, I believe. Might, might. No, it ain't a minute. That's a matter of seconds. So God said, y'all ain't got but seconds to impress me. And then you gone. But y'all think y'all got years to impress him, huh? Seconds. Your life ain't nothing but a vapor. I should have pulled it up and let y'all read it. Trust me, it's in there. Come on. Uh, 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 verse 9, he said what? The Lord. I love this verse. Come on, read it. The Lord is not slack. Concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but toward us, not willing that, but that all should come. God say, I'm long suffering. I'm really, I got John, I had Paul, I had Peter, uh, 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 Peter I had uh, G. Grady Ben, I had McMurray, I had Stewart, I had all of these people preaching to y'all. 
because I am long suffering. I want y'all to change. I want y'all to change. All I want is rational worship. Make a decision. Are you going to listen to me or not? I, didn't, I don't know if I read this. Rational decision has to be performed from the heart, from the soul, and from the mind. In other words, you got to say in your heart, this is what I want to do. Your soul meaning, since I want to do this, I got to enjoy it. So when I asked her to support this to marry me, I asked her to marry me because I said in my heart, I want her. I want, I want her. I want that. I, 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 want, I want her. I want her. Then I had to say in my soul, is she going to make me happy? Is she going to make me happy? Then I had to say in my mind, she's going to do some things I ain't going to like. But I'm going to deal with them. What am I saying? You saying you're going to accept God? First of all, you're going to accept in your heart. You got to say, I'm, I'm going to obey you, Lord. I'm going to do it. Then I got to say, now, are you really going to take care of me like you promised? Are you really going to do this? Because I, I got some evil ways about me. Then I had to make up my mind that, well, when I read in here that I can't wear braids, I got a problem with that. Are you going to listen to him, though? Because remember, well, I got to give up my Sundays? Talking about your mind now. Because your mind is looking at what you got to do to make this relationship work. So your mind has got to say, am I willing to give up my Sundays? Here's a good one. Am I willing to obey this man? Am I willing to take care of this woman no matter what she does? Because your mind got to deal with this stuff. Every divorce ends in because people can't control the other one. They say it's love. No, it ain't. It became love because you couldn't control each other. Y'all couldn't put up with it no more. Listen, the reason the folks, my, my daughter, I love her. She ain't saved. But she called me and she asked me about some advice, a struggle she going through. I said, Lit Jim, that's, that's her nickname. I said, Lit Jim, I said, you in that, you in that position in salvation now. She ain't got the Holy Ghost, but she's working hard at doing right. I said, you in that betwixt two now where most people leave Jesus. Because now you finding out when I want to do good, evil is always there. And I'm tired. She said, I'm tired, daddy. Every time I do something, something just eat me up. And she ain't even got the Holy Ghost yet. Because something is eating me up that you shouldn't have done this. She said, I'm so tired, Dad. I can't do nothing. I said, you right in that position where most folk decide to leave the church. I said, don't leave the church, honey. I said, because you're on the verge of getting the Holy Ghost now. Because you're right there. When you make up your mind, I ain't going to do it no more. And cross over, bam, you're going to speak in tongues. Because you have made it up in your mind. You have made it up in your soul. You have made it up in your heart. I'm doing this thing. It's just like a woman. Listen, y'all date and you date. And you date and you finally decide to pop the question. Why didn't you pop the question the first time y'all went out? Because you had to check her out. You had to see what she said, how she walked. Yeah, and then woman, you did the same thing. But y'all would got to a point where you say, you know, I think I'll take a chance with him. How many of y'all ready to take a chance with Jesus? How many of y'all ready to give up the Sunday? How many of y'all saying, okay, okay, yeah, okay, Jesus, you done popped the question. Here's my answer. I'm going to give you rational worship starting the day. In other words, I'd have made up in my mind, I'm going to do what you tell me to do. Come on, let's go back. Let's go back to, to Corinthians. Hallelujah. I'm sorry, Romans. I done made it up in my mind. Romans chapter 12. Hallelujah. I, I, I was just thinking, it would have been a good title about the title of the message, Will You Marry Me? <laughs> Jesus said, Will You Marry Me? That's a sermon there, Elder Whitfield. I'm going to preach that one day. I got to get the scriptures. But Will You Marry Me? Change the title to Will You Marry Me? Because I'm going I'm to add some more information to it now. Jesus said, will y'all marry me? Not me, him. I got a <laughs> uh, uh, um, 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 Y'all know the men, y'all know, brothers, that we're the woman in this relationship, right? See, women, y'all got it easy because y'all already a woman. Y'all know what it means to tell a man, I do. Well, we got to deal with that. <laughs> 
<laughs> right, Brother Ben? We got to right, think about that one. I'm a man. Telling no man, yes, I'll marry you. We're the woman. We're the body of Christ in this relationship. Amen. Come on, Romans chapter 12. Everybody got it? Don't y'all love being saved? You got to love it. God said, will you marry me? I like that. Thank you, Jesus. Will you marry me? In other words, can I have your heart? Can I have your soul? Can I have your mind? In other words, hallelujah, can I have everything about you? Everybody know what that means, even the kids that ain't married. They know what marriage means. Amen. They know that means, hey, mom and dad are running the house. Amen. That means we got to do what God tell us to do. Anybody, ain't nobody confused with that. Maybe y'all was confused with that rational. Amen. But will you marry me? Chapter 12, verse 1. He said what? Since you're going to marry me, I beseech you therefore. No, no, no. Back up. Put your name there. Take out brethren. So I beseech you therefore, John, by the mercies of God. That ye present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your, the least we could do. I got to give some support is my body. I can't give my body to no other woman. I can't give my body to no man. I, so support is get my body. I get her body. We're married. I don't get to go and sleep around no more. I don't get to go flirting no more. I don't get, oh, glory, this is getting good. I don't get to find a friend no more. I don't get to find a person that I love talking to no more. I got everything I need in to support this. I don't look for a woman with pretty hips no more. I don't look for nobody to sweet, talk sweet things to me no more. Because I got everything in to support this. What am I talking about? I got Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus said, will you marry me? You won't have to look for nobody to hug you no more. You won't have to look for nobody to provide for you no more. You don't have to look for nobody to comfort you no more. You don't have to look for a, a, a guiding counselor no more. He said, I'm your counselor. I'm your God. I'm your prince of peace. You won't happen to Jesus to come to me. God, oh, glory. Hallelujah. God said, I beseech you, therefore, give me your body. Give me everything you got. I beseech you, therefore, come on, just give me everything. Everything. Live holy, accept what I give you. Listen, listen, if you are going to be my spouse, anybody here got married to run to another person to get what you want? Not even a conversation. Even if you're sad, you want to call your spouse up, don't you? If you get excited about something, you want to. I don't want my wife to go have a car accident and call Beverly first. You got problems, you come to me. What am I saying? Jesus said, you got problems, you come to me. Jesus said, you got worry, Jesus said, you come to me. Jesus said, if you got issues, you come to me. Jesus said, if you hungry, you come to me. So soon as my wife hungry, can't go buy no lunch, she gonna call up Tommy. Oh, Tommy, can you bring me some lunch? How you think I feel about that? How y'all think Jesus feel when y'all get afraid that y'all go somewhere and get your solution through a, a psychiatrist? How y'all think Jesus feel about that? How y'all think Jesus feel that when you broke, you go to these loan sharks on the corner that cost you 100% interest and now you begging Jesus to give you money to get out of debt because the devil charged you too much? How you think Jesus feel about that? How you think he feel? How would you feel if your spouse did that? First thing you're telling me, well, baby, I know we ain't got it, but we can work it out. That's what Jesus said. Come on, come on, reason with me. Come on, ain't that what he said? Come on, reason with me. I can help you out of this, but you got to tell me your situation. You got to tell me your problem. Holly, yeah, I may know it, but if you ain't asked for no help, he said you have not because you ask not. He ain't saying ask human, he's saying ask him. 
Come on, that's your reason. He said, that's the least you could do it depending on me. Since you're marrying me, give me a shot at it. Come on, verse 2, he said what? And be not conformed to that old boyfriend or that old girlfriend. Be not conformed to your mama because we broke. You go and get money from your daddy just because he got a pocket full of money. Listen, be not conformed to the alcohol because they used to make you forget your problems. Be not conformed to the sex because it made you feel better. Be not conformed to that old man. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I know you used to calling on mama. That's why he tell the man that you got to come out from among them and be ye. Uh, uh. That's why he said, leave your mama and your daddy and cleave to one another. I know you used to them giving you help, but I can do it now, honey. Ma, listen, Lisa, I know you used to doing to your mama, your daddy, and your brother, but I'm your husband now. Listen, oh, glory, hallelujah. I can do what they can do, and I can do it better. Because you're the only one I got to take care of. Oh, hallelujah. God said, I can do better than anything y'all ever dealt with in that world, but y'all don't seem to get it. He said, so will you marry me? Can I have everything about you? Can I have your heart, your soul, and your mind? Can I have it? I don't want to support it, just her heart. I want everything she got. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. From the top, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is good. Listen, why don't you prove me? Watch how I can take care of you. Why don't you give me a chance? Because you didn't know your dad and your mama could take care of you until you saw them doing it. You don't know I can do it until you see me do it. So prove me. God said, y'all go, oh, I'm loving this. God said, y'all going to come to him. He said, give me a chance. Let me prove it. Give me a chance and watch how good I look out for you. Give me a chance and come on, I'm going to prove what is good and what is acceptable. I'm going to show you I know exactly what you want. I know what you need. Hallelujah. And I'm going to make you perfect according to what I want. Since a person, since a point is perfect to what I want, she ain't perfect to what y'all want. Y'all ain't married to her. I'm married to her. Come on, get on your feet. Come on, ministers. The question, the question, the question at hand here, come on, I want all ministers up here. The question at hand here, here's the question at hand. Jesus said, will you marry me? See, some of y'all are still in the proposed stage. Some on, Josiah, stop it. Hey. Listen, some of y'all are still in the proposal stage. Some of y'all are still in the dating stage. But Jesus said today, will you marry me? Jesus wants to know, who can he count on starting today? When I married my wife, I wanted to know I can count on you starting the moment I propose. Can I count on you? She mess up before we get married. You just told me I can't count on you while we get married. Right? Anybody engage and won't just spout? The, I can't count on you. Why am I marrying you? Jesus said, can I count on you? I need to know, do I have you? Can I depend on you? Are you ready to marry me? That means, are you willing to do what I ask you to do? How many times I've told y'all, my wife made good money when I met her. I know y'all hear it, but you need to hear it again. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna show you how much I was like Jesus and didn't even know it. Cause when he made man, he made man in his image, not women. He made man. He took women out of men. He took a part of man and set it beside him. I preached that another day. But he, I made man to think like me. Amen. I told my wife she was getting ready to buy her a condo, 1985. Uh, I said, honey. If you buy that condo, I won't marry you. She said, why? I said, because I ain't moving in with no woman. I said, and then later on, I said, I told her to do something. She wouldn't do it. I said, let's get something straight. If I can't tell you what to do in dating, I won't marry you. Because I ain't fighting with you every day because you saying I can't tell you what to do. I ain't going to no relationship like that. God is saying, I ain't going to no relationship that we got to fight all the time. I ain't going into no relationship that you're going to take your money and run and do what you want to do when I want you to do something for me. God is saying, if I, listen, y'all, get this. God is saying, if I can't control you, 
You ask any man, not a male, they may not, they, they may not have the nerve to say what I say. But if they, if they feel like that woman, if they, they can't rule and control that woman, because I ain't marrying you to mistreat you, I'm marrying you to take care of you. But I need you to obey me in order for me to take care of you. Because I know how I want to take care of you. Because I know how I want you to be. You are going to be my wife. I want you a certain way for me. God is saying, I'm not going to abuse none of y'all. But I know what kind of bride I want. I want a bride without spot, without bring, a wrinkle, without a blemish. And no, I want a perfect woman. Not perfect for Beverly, not perfect for Aaron, not perfect for Jane, perfect for me. You are my wife. You are my bride. I know how. I don't want you perfect for the devil. I don't want you perfect for the world. I don't want you perfect for your mama. I want you perfect for me. So the question is, will you marry me? Come on, you want to marry God and you ready to commit to this proposal. Come on up and get you some prayer. And tell God, yes, I'll marry you. Yes, Lord, I'll marry you. I'll marry you. I'll marry you. But you got to make that decision. You got to make that decision. Because once you get in this marriage, ain't but one way out. One Ain't but one way out. You get in this marriage. Hallelujah. This is a marriage that goes into eternity. This is a marriage that goes over into eternity. This is a marriage that goes into eternity. Hallelujah. And God said, I ain't going to divorce you until you die. When I kill you and take you to hell, you know, we, the, 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 hey, the marriage is off. But if I bring you to heaven, you're going to be with me for all. I got a mansion. I got a mansion. God said, I done prepared a mansion for my bride. He said, y'all got rooms already available. Listen, here's the wonderful part. He said, already got your name on it. Because I know who's coming up there. I already got your name on it. So will you marry me? Will you marry me? Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. And guess what they said over there with Joshua? Yes, we're going to do what the, Yes, we'll marry you. Yes, we'll marry you. Yes, we'll marry you. Listen, and, and what, what did Jonathan say? He said, no, y'all ain't going to do it. Because y'all ain't ready for this kind of commitment. Y'all ain't ready for this strictness. Y'all ain't ready for this kind of proposal. Y'all ain't ready for somebody to tell you what to do. Y'all want to get married to Jesus and keep doing what you want to do. Jesus said, listen, I won't marry you then. If I can't have all of you, I don't want... If I can't have all of you, I don't want none of you. If some supporters had told me we can't get married because I'm buying this condo, I wouldn't be married to. I wouldn't have Jeremiah and Joseph. Amen? You got to know. You got to know. You got to know what you're stepping in. Hallelujah. Glory. You got to know what you're stepping into over here. We step high. Glory. Hallelujah. We, hallelujah. We stepping into a marriage with Jesus Christ. And he's the best husband. I'm a good husband. I never match his ability. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I'll never leave you, never forsake you. You'll never be hungry. You'll never be thirsty. I heal your body. I heal your mind. I heal your land. I heal your children. I heal your mama. I heal your daddy. I'll take away all of your problems if you marry me. I'll take away all your problems if you marry me. Isn't that wonderful? Jesus said, if you marry me, I take away all of your problems. So, will you marry me? Will you marry me? Will you marry Jesus today? Will you marry Jesus today? Will you marry Jesus today? Marry Jesus today? Hallelujah. Everybody that's married, we know what a good marriage is like, huh?
it's funny how people walk around, men and women, and they, they believe in one day they're going to be married. So why do people want to get married? Because they want a friend. They want a husband. They want a wife. They want sex. Amen. They want somebody to go to the movie with. They want somebody to go to the doctor with. Go to the, 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 the ball game with. They want a companion that's there at their beckoning and call. Right? They want a companion that's there at their beckoning and call. That's what they want. That's all marriage is. That's all the desire of marriage. I want somebody there so when I'm sitting at home, I got somebody to talk to. Hallelujah. That's, you know why we like that? Because God made us that way. That's why he said it's not good for man to be alone. It's not good for man to be alone because we all want somebody. We all want somebody there. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Nobody like being lonely, do they? Nobody like being lonely. I don't care how old you get. You don't like being lonely. That's why old folk, when they talk to somebody, they talk so long because they're glad to have somebody to talk to. But when you're married, but when you're married, you always got somebody there to talk to, huh? You always got somebody that you can cry with, laugh with, have fun with, sit in the backyard, just ride down the road with. You feel good. Listen, I'm talking about Jesus. I got Jesus. Feel good. When somebody ain't there talking to me, I can still talk to Jesus. Hallelujah. When things ain't going my way, I can still talk to Jesus. When I'm struggling and don't know what to do, I got Jesus. When things just don't seem to go the way I want them to, I got Jesus. When I need just somebody to laugh with and tell a joke or hear a joke. I got Jesus. Hallelujah. So guess what? Will you marry me? Will you marry me? Will you marry me? Jesus said, will you marry me? Who, who don't want a husband like that? Who don't want a husband like that? Who don't want a husband that can hug you when everybody else see fault in you. When everybody else talking about you. You got somebody that reaches out and put their arms around you. When you're mad at folks, whether it be family or friend, you got somebody that'll come along and just comfort you and say, don't worry about it. It's going to be all right. Hallelujah. When you're hurting, whether it be mental or physical or spiritual, you got somebody that come along and just say, hey. When you don't know the decision to make and you call up your spouse and say, what do you think? You can call up Jesus and say, Lord, what do you think? What, what should I do? Where should I go? Where can I find a job? What should I eat? What, what, I, I, what, what Lord? Hallelujah. Jesus said, anything you want from me, all you got to do is talk to me. So will you marry me? Will you marry me? Will you marry me? Thank you, Jesus. Will you marry me? Will you marry me? Anybody want to marry Jesus? Anybody want to marry Jesus? I'm definitely going to marry him. I'm already married to him. I know the wedding ain't took place, but just the fact that I put the ring on. What's the ring? The Holy Ghost. I got, I got the engagement ring on. I'm waiting to walk down that aisle, brothers. I'm losing weight. What do you mean losing weight? Sin. I'm... I'm shedding every sin that so easily. Hallelujah. I'm shedding every evil thought that does so easily. When I go down that aisle, Mother John, I'm going to be slim. <laughs> My white suit going to fit me to the teeth. I'm going to look good because I ain't going to have no spot. I ain't going to have no wrinkle. I ain't going to have no blemishes and no sex. I'm going to look good. Hallelujah. 
Because I'm shedding every sin that does so easily beset me. I'm changing the way I think. I'm changing the way I look at things. I'm changing how I talk. I'm changing how I wear clothes. I'm changing because I'm getting ready for a wedding. And I want a white garment. And the only way to get... Listen, 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 listen. The only way that garment going to fit us... The only way that white garment is going to fit you, you got to shed some sin. You don't shed that weight. I don't care. And don't nobody take this personal. I don't care how fat you are. You can never get a garment to fall on you without wrinkling. That's right. You're right. You're right. Because clothes ain't designed... To make curves and fall right. Clothes are designed to come straight in the line. That's the only way it falls right. Hallelujah. What am I saying? The only way you're going to look good in Jesus, you can't have no sin. That's why Jesus said, I don't want no blemishes or such things. Because that garment got to fall over you and drape over you. Straight line. There's no way for it to make a curve, is it? Oh, I wish, wish I had more time. See, I don't put another whole sermon in my head. Come on, come on, shout hallelujah. Come on, let's give God some hand praise. Jesus, so Jesus said, will you marry me? How many say I will? I will. Well, I guess that ain't too many. That's all right. Y'all ain't got to say I will. I will, Lord. I got my ring on. Come on, let us stand. Remember, down the street, 3.30, 3 o'clock. Then we're coming back here at 6 o'clock. Amen. Everybody feel good? I feel good. I feel good. I feel like going on. I feel like going on. Though trials are oppressing me, I feel like going. I feel like going on. I feel like going on. Though trials are Oppressing me, I feel like going on the race, the race, the race. No, hallelujah, nor the battle to the strong, but those who trust in Jesus Christ. And feel like going on. Come on, sing that verse again. Uh, the race is not to the swift dick. You can't be slick over here, isn't there? The battle to the. You can't be Mr. Know it all. Hallelujah. But those who trust in Jesus and feel like going on I feel like going on I feel like going on I feel like going on on oppressing me but I feel like going on Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah for a wonderful day, a wonderful service. Thank you for your message. Thank you for the help. Thank you for the strength. Thank you for the proposal. And we accept your proposal today, Lord God. We're going to be the best bride. Hallelujah that you've ever had. We're going to obey you. We're going to keep your word. We're going to bow. We're going to listen to you. We're going to incline our heart unto you, Lord God. So thank you. Thank you, thank you right now for asking us to be your bride. We give you praise and honor and glory. And everybody said in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.
with a loud voice in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen.